It's a great privilege and pleasure to share my experiences with Daddy G. So Daddy G is the embodiment of all attainment, all virtues and powers. But if I had to choose two, they would be lightness and love. And I have experiences when we first got our first retreat center in Baxter, in Victoria, and Daddy G came for the inauguration. And as she walked into the retreat center, there was a big room with a very large billiard table. And Daddy G went up to the billiard table without saying anything, took the stick in her hand and started playing with the ball. And there was a real twinkle in her eye. And it was just a, a loving experience where she wasn't judging, it was just pure love. And I remember a situation here in Lura when she came also, there was such a, a silence about her. And she went down to the stone cottage and she said to everyone, you can feel the silence. This place is the true Shantivan. She said, it's so silent. And since then, everyone that comes says the same thing. As soon as they drive in, they feel the silence. And in my feeling, it was Daddy G that started this feeling of silence. And it's been carried on now for nearly 20 years. We've had the retreat centre here. And it's like Daddy G was the founder of it. So beautiful. I remember when I was in Om Shanti Bhavan in Madhavan, and uh, Daddy G and Daddy Janki, they used to sit on opposite sides of the stage and they would call out to each other across. And uh, it was so much fun. You know, one would say something and the other would say something and they'd talk to each other like that. I remember one occasion in Om Shanti Bhavan where Daddy G, she came out in the morning before the Muli and she said, oh, there's been a very, very big wind and down in Shantivan they were, they had marquees and the marquees had fallen over. And I was very serious and I thought, oh, that's terrible. They could have hurt someone and everything like that. And Daddy G started to laugh and she said, ho, ho, the marquee has fallen down. Anyone who wants to help can come in a bus down and they can help put it up again. And uh, when I went out, I saw a big bus full of Australians and they'd all got into the bus ready to go down to help. And I thought to myself, how was I seriously judging this when Daddy G made it so light that everyone wanted to go and help? And I realised her beautiful quality of lightness. It just attracted everyone. And I have a situation when I was living in uh, another retreat centre in Australia, and that was at Wilton. And a little Mohini Ben was there, and Daddy G had to go to Victoria to give a talk, and it was thousand people or two thousand people or something booked to attend and what happened is she went off in the car and little Mohini Ben she fell over and uh, hurt herself on the leg and um, she was in pain a lot of pain and I was there with her at Wilton but the ones who had gone with Daddy G um, in the car to the airport, they heard about this 
And uh, Daddy G said, I'm going back, I'm going back. And they all said, no, you can't. Everyone's booked their ticket, you know, like it. you can't go. You have to come to the airport. She said, I'm not going, I'm not going. I want to go back to Mohini Ben. And they had to really push her into the car because she valued that friendship, that love and that closeness with, with um, Sister Mo, uh, Mohini Ben that uh, more than even thousands waiting to see her. Eventually they did push her into the car and took her to Melbourne for the program. But I'll never forget it. It was, you know, I wasn't there at the time, but when they told me about it, there was such a, um, a deep, deep desire to be with Sister Mohini. So it was a beautiful situation. And uh, then when I was in Madhuban, another situation was I was going back to Australia and I was in the bus and the bus driver stopped at Shantiban and I said, can I please go and say goodbye to Daddy G, I'll be very quick. And he said, I'll give you 10 minutes and then I'll leave. And I thought, oh, Baba, there's no way I could do it in 10 minutes. But I, I took up his challenge and I said to Baba, you have to put wings on my heels. And he did. And I ran faster than ever. <laughs> And I got there and I thought, oh, there's going to be a lot of people saying goodbye and I won't make it in time. But to my surprise, there was no one there. No one. She was just by herself in the room. And I ran up to her and I said to her, Daddy Chi, I'm on my way home to Madhuban, but you will always be in my heart. And she put her hand in a big basket she had there and she took out an orange and she gave me the orange and she said to me, and you in my heart. And she said it in English, and you in my heart. And it was so beautiful. It was the most lovely thing. And so I said, I have to go now, Daddy G. And I just waved goodbye and I ran back to the bus and I ran up the stairs of the bus into the bus and the driver took off straight away. And uh, I was just in, in like heaven, the way that she had spoken to me, that I was in her heart. And I know that she would have said that to anyone. It's like... Everyone was in her heart. Her heart was so big that not a soul was left out. And I'll never forget you, Daddy G. <laughs>